Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Retro Encounter, um, RPG Fans Off Topic podcast. Uh, I am your host for today, Peter Treisenberg, and today we're going to be talking about Chrono Cross again. It's the second part of our Chrono Cross deep dive, tri- du- duology, whatever you want to call it. Uh, joining me today, we have Marcos Gaspar. Hey, what's up? Kyle Seeley. I... Kyle, is it Seely or Sele? Like the, the, the bad guys from A. No, no, it's C like uh like I see you, dude. <laughs> I see, you. okay. I, I, I see. you know, I just wanted to get that out of my head before we uh we continued. And then uh, we also have the resident Xeno expert, Tyler Trosper. Hello. <laughs> All right, and I'm very excited to have Tyler on this episode because we're going to talk about how Chrono Cross ripped off Xenogears wholesale. Oh, well. <laughs> Savage. Like no. they, it's almost like they had the same writing staff or something. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah, though Masano Kato, I guess his contributions to Xenogears wasn't as much as uh, this. But, uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Cross is kind of his baby. This is like Masato, yeah. Masato Kado, the video game. <laughs> and last time on Masato Kado, the video game, surprise, you're a cat man. <laughs> yes. So right at the top of Fort Dragonia, um, some uh, what's it happens with the dragons tier. And now, all of a sudden, you're playing as the main villain of the game after with some freaky uh, body snatching thing going on. Uh, what do we think about that that twist, everybody? Well, I would say that I used to hate it. I always got really used to playing as Surge, and then when I, the tables got turned, it just it frustrated me that I didn't have access to my white elements. But now, years later, from a storyline perspective, I kind of think it's genius. I mean, if you don't have a guide or know what to expect, that is a hell of a twist. You missed having access to, uh, to Luminaire, is what you're saying? <laughs> Among other things. <laughs> Yeah, it's a super neat moment, and like getting uh, Link, uh, once you start playing his links, he's got he wields cr- tr- Surge's weapon, so it's not like your equipment suddenly becomes useless or anything. But he's a black element instead of a white element, and um, uh, yeah, and it's and all of a sudden everyone reacts to you very differently, um, which is interesting, um, because yeah, they don't know what the deal is as far as they're concerned. You're the uh the militaristic cat monster guy who's been uh, wrecking their stuff up. Well, I feel like as far as the term RPG goes, a lot of people tend to lose sight of the fact that it stands for role-playing game. And in this situation, I definitely feel like there is a lot of like role-playing aspect to this because you are playing the role of your enemy. That's interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, when you first... Um... So after um, after the you the situation at Fort Dragonia, you end up in this kind of demented MC Escher dimensional vortex where you meet up with Hart with Harley and um, Sprig, who is essentially he's like he's like Gao. Am I am I getting this right? He's like because I, I, I haven't used him at all, but he basically copies enemy abilities. Oh yeah, Sprig is um yeah it's more like, I don't want to say mine but like uh every de- an opponent's uh Sprig defeats uh Sprig's able to become that character. Kind of like Rue in uh T- Threads of Fate. Yeah. Ah, pretty cool. Which is really crazy because uh some of the monsters that you like start like are able to transform to um to at the very beginning like uh that chaos monster if you're able to defeat it with sprig uh knows black hole right off the bat oh that's useful (laughs) that's crazy useful that's really strong (laughs) magic tat for such a weak monster that's pretty awesome (laughs) i really like i really like how this area looks when you first get out of there as links because like 
it really is like an MC Escher painting where like somehow on the with the PlayStation hardware they were able to make this staircase um that looks impossible like um th- this the use of the pre-rendered backgrounds is really really effective and you have a puzzle where you have to like switch where the uh the paths are going and i just i think it's a really clever use of perspective um again just underlying just how uh freaking pretty chrono cross is i think we've said that enough times in the last episode but it really is like a, a tour de force as far as the playstation's graphical capabilities were concerned Yeah, I know that like yeah. working behind the scenes kind of ruins games for a lot of people, but I'm definitely curious how they pulled off that puzzle yeah, mechanically. Sure. Like, yeah, like I would, I would like to know like the artists at Square, like what they were, they were onto something like back in that that period of time, you know. I yeah, not and I mean not only that, but the I I. Sorry, um, like the character animations themselves, like in and out of battle, uh, are like really, really well done, like for the time. And I'm just kind of surprised at how well done some of the character animations are in that game. I like Lynx's uh, Lynx's special attack, where he just summons an army of cats. <laughs> F- feral cats, yes. Feral that cats. is fantastic. I love that. No, yeah, correct so- me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. What's that? Oh, go on. Uh, wasn't this game released like right at the end of the PlayStation One's life cycle? Like, I feel like it very easily could have ended up on the PS2, and maybe that is part of the reason for such detailed character animations. It came out in two thousand uh, yeah. on our end, at least. So, yeah. Was, when did the Legend of Dra- Dragoon came out? It was also two thousand. I'm pretty sure, but let me check. Legend of Power Rangers. Um, <laughs> Can you look up Zio? Zio was good. Had to. Uh, December 2nd, 1999 is its initial release date. Then North America got it in 2000. Didn't hit Europe until 2001. Yeah, and it looks like, like the PS2 was uh, 2000. Yeah, and Chrono Cross was 1999 so, yeah, was... in Japan. Um... So yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, they yeah. come around, and then August fifteenth, two thousand in North America. So it looks like Japan got it um a fair bit earlier than we did, which I guess you know makes sense. And this game probably had a lot of localization work to go into it because of all the different characters and uh, um their oh yeah. Um, but uh, I think they pulled it off pretty well because I think the script of Chrono Cross, by and large. Like is is actually fairly solid, uh, and we'll get into some of the more philosophical aspects of this game. So many right. accents and <laughs> yeah, yar. Not a lot of this guy are sick. Yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> we we've kind of moved past that that period, you know. Um, uh, I do like how once you get out into home world, so uh, you get out into into home world and you're not able to switch back to another world yet uh which is where you were when the body switch happened sorry a little hiccup there um so once now you have to deal with all the stuff going on back in your home dimension and i like how like when you get to arnie village everyone's just like really freaked out by you like because again they know they, they they know lynx is um a villain from poor um and then uh, Radi- you actually have to fight the village elder, uh, Radius, and he joins your party shortly thereafter, which uh, I liked that. That was pretty cool. Um, and we get to go back to Viper Manor, which is in ruins in this dimension. Yeah. Um, this is going a little ahead of, but a bit, but I would... Because I like how uh, like all the party members that you run to are like kind of surprised... Uh, or don't know it's you, but I remember running back into Guile and Termina, and he knows it's you, but he's like, oh no, at this time, I I, I can't join you, but I know it's you, Serge, but it's like, that's just an excuse not to put you back in my party. (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. Even with Glenn, 
Uh, Glenn did the yeah. same thing. He's like, I, oh, I yeah. just can't look at your face. Like, okay, Glenn. Well, that's rude. Wow. <laughs> that's rude. Racist piece of crap. <laughs> Everyone's racist against so any humans in this universe. <laughs> Yeah, which is actually you know kind of true. Uh, yeah. Like even when even um what's it like the villagers when uh, they know like it's not you or whatever or they know it, you're not evil as links or whatever because Radius is with you. They're still a little hostile towards you. Like the, some of the villages and Arnie says you know you should probably get out of here because you know a lot of people won't like your kind. Yeah. No, and mm-hmm. I like I like the uh, the different like and that that builds into the plot once you get to the um. Uh, is it Goldov the island? Um, no. yeah, yeah, Goldov the the monster nope. island, Marble, oh, Marble, Marble. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, once you get there, and it's um in this universe that like the poor military has been very aggressive to uh the demi demi human population in this area, and it leads to this whole side quest with uh Fargo, Nikki, um Irene's the mermaid. And all this other stuff where you have to, um, basically you have to try and convince them to try and rebuild um, the demi-human society in Marble. And I really like that subplot. I think that's really, um, that ties in really well with the game's bent about um, uh, living in harmony with nature and trying to like uh, find the better path forward with the planet. Yeah, I like the parallels between the demi humans and the mystics from Chrono Trigger. And considering that Poor is so close to Medina, it, it makes me wonder, like, what is going on over there at this time? Right. But as we get into later on, that's uh, that's not really part. We can't because um, the fake computer has everyone like sealed off in El Nido. They, they are very isolated from the mainland. But uh, the Zelbes section is pretty interesting. Like I like um how Fargo is just a dirty cheat at the that ca- at the casino. <laughs> That's very in character. <laughs> yes. Did anyone... Lots of cat stuff. Oh yeah, the cats. Oh, I loved all the cat stuff. Turning into a cat, sneaking in. That's that's a classic RPG dungeon stuff right there. Old Man Sneff is kind of an entertaining party member, too. I actually kept him with me for quite a long time when I first played. Oh, uh, I'm you? not sure what it was about him, but I really liked his personality. He just seemed like an interesting character. Did he offer anything uh, story-wise, uh, you know, content? Or was it just hearing his, uh, Hey, man, look at his black magics. Oh, good old Sneff. <laughs> As far as I recall, no, he did not really play much of a role, but that was a uh, long time ago that I used him. If you add, a, if you keep Norris in your party after you add him at Viper Manor, he's like the, the poor lieutenant or whatever. Um, he actually has some unique, uh, some unique dialogue once you get to the Dead Sea, um, because he can interact with, uh, with stuff in that environment. He brings up a little message about Lavos, which I think is really interesting. I have never not experienced that. Like, he actually was one of my favorite characters. Uh, once he joins me, I usually don't get rid of him. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah, same. Like, he's, act- he's a very reliable party member. Um, oh, yeah, I really enjoyed him as my party as well. That is one thing about Chrono Cross that is kind of love it or hate it for me. Um, is that you do, in order to get the most out of the experience, it's now, the game can kind of, you can kind of intuit what characters to have in your party at what time, but um, for some story events, to get the most out of them, you really want to have a certain party set up so that everyone is there. Um, Because some of them will have unique dialogue, like having Nikki in your party when you go to the uh, to Fargo's ship in another world for the first time. Um you want to have, be able to have them interact with each other. But uh, overall, like, I think Cross does a pretty decent job of... It does a, I think it does a better job of guiding the player at least until the very late game um, than I did when I first played it. But it's still definitely... There are some... It's, some parts of it do seem a little opaque. 
Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, there were several times that, I mean, it's been so long since I played it originally, and then I just like, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going, and like this this little save icon will kind of, like whenever you save the game, it will kind of tell you like a vague what's going on in the plot, but not, yeah. y- you kind of have to yeah, stumble your way through a few times. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, but when you hit the, the Dragon Quest where you're going to collect the relics, that, that uh, title for that chapter stays the same throughout. So it's like, are you going to yes. have to be where I go next? Do I go meet the Green Dragon over here or over there? Yes, yes. Because when I was going to like the Sky Dragon, I was like, do I need to be in a home world or another world? And then I went and then I was like, oh, wrong world. Need to go back. Okay, now I found it. But then you have to. Uh, sorry. Sorry, go on. Oh, that's one of the downsides of strategy guides because that was the era where I was using them for almost everything I played, and I just really wish I could go back and experience some of these games from a blind perspective. Yeah, it's only fair, I suppose. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I think it's I think it's helpful, like as a time saving method, at least with with games like this. I think I mean like it's not like you really need a strategy guide for stuff like cause most of the boss fights are pretty self-explanatory with a few exceptions but uh just figuring out a, like a quick okay where do I go next is helpful although the dragon quest section is very open ended there are a lot of uh, side quests and opportunities you can do heck even getting the colonel cross like the titular item is one of those you have to go to a location that's not marked on the map drop two key items there and uh, and then you get it, and then the way you use it at the end is never outright stated to you. <laughs> yeah. You, like, I, I yes. Yes. Uh, uh. But uh, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Um, once you uh, basically the 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 gist of this point onward is that you have to go to the Sea of Eden, which in Homeworld is now known as the Dead Sea. This kind of maelstrom on the map that you can't quite get into without um until you talk to you have to talk to the sage on the zelbes take your boat over there use the item but surprise the item is blocked off by a familiar item from chrono trigger the the masamune it's back and it's evil now (laughs) uh so we got to go to the isle of the damned and get another magic sword and try to open that off um uh, what do we think about uh, the Masamune's <laughs> I thought it was interesting. The main problem I had with this portion of the game was that it was just... like, Well, the first part was pretty straightforward. I felt like this was very... You need to do this, but go here. But to go here, you need to do this, etc., etc. And while I thought the Masamune was a very interesting addition, I, I felt that it kind of suffered from being shoehorned into a section like that. Yeah, like a lot of that. Uh, the thing I've noticed that that's irked me about Chrono Cross a little bit is the, like one of those moments where, oh, you need to go here, but as you said, you have to go here, but you have to go here first or here. Yeah, there's just a lot of like. I don't know, sticking out when it's not, I don't know. It, does, it just, sometimes it feels kind of unnatural. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate because during these time uh, moments when it's telling you, oh no, you got to go there. Going there will like thresh out so much of like story. Like this is a uh, following radius and uh, just uh, whether, I forget uh, the guy's name, uh, Gar- um, but Gar- it was a uh, glad Gar- uh, in his backstory with the Moss Moon and it just being evil. Uh, like things like that, I really appreciate that they actually threshed out characters versus, hey, look, a uh, voodoo doll. No story there, but he's there. <laughs> Very much agreed. Although Mojo is great. Oh, he, he's great. He has yeah, great like, text. Mo- Mojo, Fungi, and Turnip are fantastic party members. But uh, just because you know, what other games can you say? You can have a talking turnip in your party. But um, yeah, I like the 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 side quests and the the parts of the story that actually flesh out the other party members, like Radius, Glenn. Um, the other dragoons. If you continue on the Masamune quest, you'll uh, get a, a, the one of the best weapons in the game, and get way more info on Karsh and the other Acacia dragoons. Um, so that's always really cool. Um, I actually think you need to do the Master Mune quest in order to get the true ending. 
I could be mistaken on that, but I'm pretty sure you can't get the Chrono Cross unless you, unless you've finished at least part of that quest. I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I don't recall. I'm not sure about that. All right, to the wiki. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I I don't know if it affects it, but uh, it's just still a lot of cool story to have. Like even that, which is wild. Even that side quest of getting the Masa Moon uh, as a, a swallow is like adds so much like like main story elements that you you could just easily like blow past, which is a little, a little annoying. Like I would I would rather blow past like side quests uh story of Pushel versus like Dario in a night. <laughs> <laughs> Right, no. Yeah, but don't you want to hear about Lena spontaneously combusting? <laughs> oh, I, I love that thing. Oh, man. Um, Side note, I did think of another game that a turnip joins your party in Saga right. Frontier. Oh, we got some, some Kawazu up in here. Be very afraid. I do like, um,. Uh, which one? I do. I do like um, the next segment though, the Dead Sea, very much. Once you get in there, I think this is probably my the high point of the game for me. Um, I mean, agreed. We alluded to this a little bit last episode, but the Dead Sea's big thing is that it is essentially the the aborted future timeline from Chrono Trigger. Um, by by going back in time and changing the past to and changing the past to save the world from Lavos what's effectively happened is they've created a dimensional distortion where the future that is now never going to exist somehow wound up and it's trapped in stasis and just going there is the atmosphere in that zone is really really cool um I love the music I love how it's like so futuristic ruins yeah, sorry you were saying Marcos uh, so I there's something that is incredibly confusing, and I mean that's that shouldn't be uh, something new. Uh, but the that Dead Sea that's in Homeworld, correct? Yes. And Homeworld is the timeline, which um, isn't the timeline that's supposed to exist. But yes. from my understanding, uh, this this is one that gets really bad. I know in another world that's just a timeline that just continues to go on. And where Chronopolis uh, ends up existing because Chrono Trigger went, or Chrono, Trigger, Chrono and his friends uh, stopped Lavos. But in Homeworld, I'm trying to uh, remember or understand, like, because there was a split, like another dimension, mm -hmm. uh, and Chrono can't. I'm trying to understand, it was Chrono part of both dimen uh, dimensions, or was it only part of uh, another world? And in Homeworld, since he wasn't part of that. From what I understand, the, the it's yeah. the home world's dimension is the one that is currently on the path to ruination because of the Dead Sea split. Because remember, in its home world where poor is a lot more militant, um, and uh, Guardia has fallen, and basically it's the bad end from Chrono Trigger, essentially the one that gets into that in Chrono DS. Um, mm -hmm. um, and from what I understand, the reason that happens and the reason why. At the end of it, when you find the ruins of Nadia's Bell and the Chrono Trigger cast shows up and blames you for it, um, is because Surge surviving in Homeworld is what... Essentially, it's like Chrono, Chrono and the party saved the world, but Chrono Trigger operates on linear time, like going forward and backwards in time along a singular path but not across the other dimensions. So essentially, because Surge survived in this timeline, but died in the, the actual timeline, um, that's why the Dead Sea is there instead of Chronopolis. Um, okay. So the, the Dead Sea is what the future is going to be in that moment, in that area. Yeah, because it's the future that got aborted from the... It's, it's no longer exists in the proper timeline because of Chrono, Luca, and Marl. Um... But because of Surge, it's going to happen again, essentially. Um, okay. 
because um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the timeline split when Surge died? Yes, that's when the timeline split and the and the world okay. happened. That, that that's again, that's why they're mad at you when you get into the Dead Sea. Yeah, I think uh, the uh, the time not timeline the dimension split uh, when he uh, when he was uh, three years old or around there when uh, he was supposed to drown. Uh, that's where it split off where he survived and and then uh, in another world he actually died and that's the real time uh, dimension timeline that like yeah exactly. I mean I get confused with names but yeah timey wimey wibbly wobbly once once anytime you're dealing with uh, theoretical science like. <laughs> Just looking at like something like I mean I mean spoilers for Avengers Endgame everybody um <laughs> um it's the biggest because uh, th that movie deals with time travel as well and there's a big point in the ending that has drawn some contention and I think if there's a fair number of pretty fair ex explanations within the incredibly loose rules the movie provides to explain how that ending is possible and I think Chrono Crosses is the same way like. Yeah, so basically if we can just be like, okay, the there's like a dimensional anomaly that happened because we changed the timeline and now the future timeline from Chrono Trigger has nowhere to go. And also because this dimensional split happened, all of our efforts to defeat Lavos might not even be for anything in this other timeline. Basically, it's like, you know, all this chaos can happen essentially because the timeline split. Into I think what yeah. I find interesting about that is, um, I, I apologize. Oh, you're fine. Did you have more? No, no, I, okay, was, um, I was literally like, just trailing off. Guess, so they say homeworld in another world, and there's this big thing about which one is real. But I guess from the perspective of a character in a homeworld or another world, wouldn't you say that their world is the real timeline it's yeah. a perspective thing, and I think that ties in very well to the Lynx Surge thing. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because exactly, because from Surge's perspective, that timeline is his home world, whether or not it's like the whatever real reality or whatever, it's still his home. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Lynx in one timeline, I mean, that the links in the one timeline is known is he's still like feared by the people, but he seems to have a very different uh, place in that world than he does in another world where the dragoons are. Because in in home world, the dragoons went into the Dead Sea and never came out. Um, and then in another world, they're still active. So uh, I'm I'm wondering, does Lynx uh, exist in a uh, home world then, or or is it just another world that he exists in? I think he exists. I in believe because Lynx, Lynx is essential. I was because I know Lynx is is just fate. Um, and so fate, I'm just really curious about that. Fate exists in both worlds. Um, I don't know. Although I think right. fate might exist across because I think Chronopolis might actually be kind of on the shores of both worlds because. Remember, fate destroys the Dead Sea because there is a frozen flame there, and it doesn't want Surge to activate it. Then it wants him to activate the frozen flame there in Chronopolis. So I'm not 100% clear on this. Did any of you catch this? Is the Dead Sea supposed to be 2300 AD, or is that even beyond that? I think it is supposed to be 2300 AD. They meant I think they mention it um if you take Norris into that one uh into that one computer room. And gotcha. later on when you're fighting yeah. when, when you're fighting Miguel, he basically spells out this is a future that they saw and decided to change, which implies to me heavily, yeah, okay, this is the the the, the future timeline from Chrono Trigger. Now, did any of you see Johnny on the highway, the yeah. racing robot from Trigger? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Such a minor, easily missable <laughs> detail, but that ties back oh. into what we were discussing about these detailed, pre-rendered backgrounds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah. missed that. Yeah, Chrono, Chrono Cross once again being the dark, the dark half of Chrono Cross. Hey, of Chrono Trigger. You meet. Hey, remember that like funny character you used to race and play the mini games with in Chrono Trigger? Yeah, he's dead. His corpse is like strewn about along the background of this environment. 
have fun. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Dead robot people. <laughs> I, honestly, Man, the, the Kato must have been really angry. <laughs> Kato, Kato is like getting out all of his frustrations about Johnny somehow. Honestly, there's just so much. There's so much. There, the, the Dead Sea is such a layered, textual section of the game. Like in terms of just how much is going on. Uh, I love the encounter with Miguel, um, Lena's dad, who is trapped there, um, in the in the Dead Sea. Um, I love, I love. That was left field. It's left field, but man, is he? Is it? Is it cool? That's a hard fight too. Like he is really challenging. <laughs> oh yeah. I did anyone that. have Lena in their party for that? I didn't. Does she have any any unique dialogue? Wait, I Lena. Did. Yeah. I don't think you can have Lena. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, you can't. Never I mind. I'm sorry. Like, I was going to say. Oh, uh, I was gonna think like you want her to kill her daddy. Yes. No, no. <laughs> I mean, Serge, oh, man. Serge, Serge gets to kill his dad because you know, spoiler alert: his dad is the cat man. <laughs> but <laughs> no, so, but... Yeah, sorry. Go on. No, no. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? So I had a thought. Um, this game has such a divided like fan base. Like some people love it. Some people are like, no, this ruins Trigger. It takes everything we loved and just. Like, once again, spoilers, but, I mean, we're there already. The main trio from the original game are dead in the timeline. I mean, I'm wondering if perhaps when they made this game, that was the feeling they wanted the player to feel, like, to emulate what the characters in the game, like, in that timeline may feel about their, yeah. I think it 100% was, because Kato's gone on record as saying that he wanted Cross to be Cross, not Trigger 2. Um, he wanted it to stand yep. on its own as a unique chrono game in its own in its own right. Um, which is why I think it gets to play with the characters and scenarios from from Trigger and invert them in a lot of ways. But I think is is do we do we have any other points we want to hit about the Dead Sea before we move on? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. All right, just double checking. I'm good. Yeah, the next section of the game is probably the one of the longest chains of where the hell do I go in gaming history, um, ladies and gentlemen. We got <laughs> in order in order to get our body back and uh and figure out um what the H E double hockey stick is going on. We need to go hunt down some dragons and defeat them in battle. And there are six of these guys. And you don't know where to go, what dimension to go to, uh, you know, kind of a, you have a general idea of where they are, and there's a whole bunch of side quests you can do in the meantime, and no, nothing absolutely whatsoever to tell you where you should be going. It's great. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, is, and then... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> And the, one of the frustrating parts is like I remember when I I finally found the, the white dragon and then I went up to it. It was like, oh no! Before you can fight me, you have to fight the five, five other dragons. Then you can fight me. It's like, oh, oh, okay. The white dragon's kind of full of himself. Well, I like that they took what seemed to be one of the most pointless fetch quests and turned it into something like very central to the story. Yeah, no, that's true. Um... And, like, it's, it's, and I'm being facetious. It's a cool section. Like, the dragons really do play a major thematic role in Chrono Trigger, since they are essentially like the guard, almost the guardian deities of the planet. And um, the reason they're there actually has to do with another um, aborted future from Trigger. Um, in this, well, it's it's from an, as we find out later on, they hail from an alternate dimension, um, uh, wherein the reptites were never wiped out by Lavos. Um, and eventually evolved and grew and became the dominant species on the planet. Um, so they, too, have a very interesting role to play in this universe, and getting to encounter them in different ways and go to some pretty neat optional, some pretty neat side dungeons while you're doing it is pretty cool. It's just uh, a little confusing. 
So we determined that fate exists across dimensions, but I think it's an interesting parallel that you fight half the dragons in one and half the dragons in another, implying that they also kind of have cross-dimensional awareness. Yeah, which would make sense because di- they're di- the di- they were sucked <laughs> in, into a dimensional rift at the same time as Chronopolis. I guess that could make sense that they are kind of aware of the, the branch in time, so to speak. You, you know, uh, this, like for myself, I I don't know why, like uh, the those dragon uh, gods or whatever. Um, for some reason, I'm under the impression that they're all from another world and the future in Chronopolis, because they fought uh, all of them formed together as tr- the, I guess uh, the the bad uh, the. That's it, what it is. Yeah, the dragon god. They fought the. Uh, he, the dragon god fought against Chronopolis and lost, and fate split uh, the dragon god up. And I'm just wondering, it, as like a like a defensive measure, putting some of the dragons in the alternate dimension to well, I prevent. Don't think, uh, I don't think they did that because the dimensional split happened after when after that. Um, the dragons were there in El Nido before Surge got was taken to Chronopolis and came into contact with the Frozen Flame. Which is the incident that split the timelines? Like for me, that like I don't know. Like I'm always confused because I feel like El Nido. Like it, is that not a controlled area where yeah. like fate has like all the control? Because that would make sense why the the records of fate exist there, but not in like other parts of uh. Excuse me, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Tyler, granted, Tyler, I wouldn't Tyler, know. This is your, this is your cue. Uh, Chrono Cross does the same as you. <laughs> Come on in. We're the save points. The oh, save no, points don't get me started. They're controlling your minds. Save point. They're controlling the population. Uh, uh, uh. Evil save points. <laughs> Evil save points. Yeah. 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 That's very, yeah, pretty much ripped from Zenogears, but. <laughs> but it made. It made yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, going back to what we were discussing, because um, because I remember when you uh play the song in Marbule and uh destroy the creatures, you can actually like h- hear the dragon flying, but then you have to go to the other dimension in order to actually see uh find the dragon. So I thought that was an interesting moment where it kind of proved that like I don't know if there was like. You could tell that they may transcend the different dimensions because you were able to hear the dragon moving around in the other dimension. You had to travel back to fight it. Yeah, that's a possibility. If that made any sense. That's a possibility, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, excuse me. Um, but yeah, the dragon, the drag. So, but once the dragon quests are over, you have you now have the dragon to your back, so you can go back to Fort Dragonia, the other one this time, um, and turn back into yourself. Yay, human again. Um, yeah, yeah, and then all your other party members are like, "Oh, hey, we're back. <laughs> hey, we're hey buddy. Hey, man, how you doing?" <laughs> What ya doing? Uh, I don't know what the uh, this is a bit late. I don't know what the uh, authenticity of this claim is, but I did just Google this, and it says that uh, when the dimensional split occurred in 1010 AD, uh, that Balthazar may have had safeguards in place to kill off the duplicates of the split dragons, and that makes sense to me if that's true, because otherwise you're going to have two dragon gods. Yeah, he probably wanted to avoid that as much as possible, so that can make sense. And that could be why why some of the areas are so, like, where you find the dragons are either inaccessible or, like, kind of screwed up. Um, because they don't have their, like, deity. <laughs> yeah, like the water dragon island. But without confirmation, yeah. I will not endorse that as fact. I mean, that's really the thing, once you get into the endgame of Chrono Cross especially, is they start to dump huge chunks of plot on you. Um, and especially at the very end, oh, yeah. it almost feels oh, like yeah. ran out of time. Um, hmm. but you know, what? I I can definitely believe that uh, theory because uh, in where the uh, was it the Earth God, uh, the Sphinx is there, and that Sphinx is way harder than any of the Dragon Gods. <laughs> uh, if you were to fight it, fight it directly, 
Uh, especially if you mess up a riddle, you're dead. You're dead. Oh, and I'm trying to remember, isn't the the riddle like uh the elements that you attack him in that order, isn't that the the color yeah, order as well for that, cross? That's, that's the hint for the Chrono Cross. That's like that's like the there are two hints you get. One is in Terra Tower and one is the Sphinx, yeah. Yeah, so I'm too so. Yeah. Like, <laughs> two in there. Right? Oh two yeah. <laughs> That's a guy, dang it. I, yeah. It 100% is. Oh, my God. Yeah, I certainly didn't, yeah, I certainly didn't uh, know that when I was a kid. I just cheated. <laughs> um, What do we think of Chronopolis itself, though, once you actually get there? Because that's another area where I really like... It's kind of almost like the Dead Sea 2.0, where it's another area that's kind of in stasis. Um, filled with ghosts, it really d- gives this great sense of isolation and abandonment. Ghosts I would and say robots. It's my favorite. You think it's your favorite area? I absolutely love it. Oh yeah, it just it pulled so much together. Everything that was very, what's going on? I feel like for the most part that tied up a lot of loose ends, and it linked the two games together in a way that, while somewhat depressing, it, it satisfied me. Hey guys, remember Robo? He gets killed on screen. <laughs> Which is really uh, ironic because um, it's not the Promethean unit of uh, Robo. Yeah, yeah, that's what that the Prometheus circuit is Robo. They oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I think about that. He gets destroyed. And even, um, oh, it was uh, that gets killed in Kid's uh, Nightmare. Yeah, because remember, uh, and they also get into Atropos. When, when you're getting to Chronopolis, they reference Atropos, um, the other robot. That was oh yeah yeah from Robo side quest yeah yeah and if I recall fate was even based off of the mother brain model which yeah. and she looks like yet another tie in uh huh so that, that it all really starts coming together really well in the Chronopolis I like how um, Luca's involvement in there she helping to build the fate supercomputer with Balthazar um I also really like um bef- this is a little after the, after the fate battle she gets she leaves a little letter for kid. Um, who grew up in Luca's orphanage. And that moment is really sweet. Um, and also, um, I, re- I, I, I like that moment. I also like how it ties into the um, one of the biggest fan theories about Colonel Cross, which is that Surge is somehow connected to, to Magus or Janus. That's what my impression was the first time I played and saw that scene. Mm-hmm, because... Um, as we discover quickly, Kid um, the is Shala's clone daughter. Um, wh- when Shala was like sent out of time and ended up merging with Labo, she basically created a copy of herself and sent it away, and that was Kid, baby Kid, who was raised by Luca. Um, years later, when Cro- when um, Surge was injured. Um, she came into contact with him again and guided him to the frozen flame. Um, when you read Luca's letter, she talks about um, she talks to Kid about telling her about her true heritage and also how um, also how um, uh, someone is looking for you and, and actually might be right beside you right now and says hi to Janus. And I'm like that right there. I'm th- that sets the fan theorist in me going like, "Hmm, what if?" Yeah. I about the astral amulet when you realize that it is Shala. Yeah, Shala's amulet. Uh, another thing I want to point out about Chronopolis is the uh, shout out to Radical Dreamers that is easily missable. Uh, did any of you catch that one? I did not oh, yeah, that. like that uh, one computer, like a computer yeah. monitor was talking about it. Yeah, side room, left side. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what is it? See, that was really cool. It's Isn't that just like directly quoting uh, like a passage from uh, Radical Dreamers? I don't recall, but I do believe that, I mean, it's it, saying that that took place in another timeline still, which at least brings Radical Dreamers into the canon Right. Which is pretty funny because didn't Kato not want to talk about anything with time in this game? I mean, you still kind of have to, considering the Dead Sea and everything. <laughs> yeah, I, there, there's a lot of like uh, just uh, dimensional stuff, and that's why this is uh, 
That was really confusing. <laughs> I mean, say la vie. Um, anyway, say la vie. Anytime you start getting into theoretical science like this and stuff, it's better just to like kind of roll with it because. <laughs> But even then, like, they talk about the opening song of the game is Time Scar. Like, they basically make it seem as though damage has been done to time. So I want to throw this out there. Um, when the Dragon God shows up following Chronopolis, uh, the first time, did anyone else think that it was there to help? Uh, I mean, that's the impression we're given. Yeah, because that, that really threw me off. I'm like, what? Yeah, I was really confused why uh, this, like, dragon, like, I mean, this is, like, 12, 13-year-old me, and I'm like, why is this dragon, like, combining to one dark, scary-looking dragon and just starting to kill things? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> why, Harley? <laughs> Um, Terra Tower itself is kind of, it's almost like the real final dungeon, because you don't really get one for the final boss. Um, I really like this zone. I, I like how, like, somber it is when you get into battle with each of those elemental creatures. Like, that music with, like, the chime going is how slow and melancholy it is. And, and it, I can agree with that. And it really drives home this idea that, like, the dragons and the reptites and all that are nature fighting against what they believe to be in humanity as being an aberration of evolution. Cause, um, they touch on too, that the frozen flame is actually a piece of Lavos. Like it's a piece of Lavos shell, which, and that caused humanity to evolve differently and also wiped out the reptites in trigger. So as far as they're concerned, yeah, you, we would, we would have been the dominant species if it wasn't for Lavos. Again, just more little connections back to the past game that I find really fascinating. Uh, what was the reason for guarding the the frozen flame? Like, why the dragon god had it? I think they just want control over it. Like, it's just they they want to keep it away from people and uh, safeguard their own evolution, I suppose. Okay, because I know when they're in the Dead Sea, like it said before. Uh, Surge and the group are able to get the frozen flame. The sea just destroys itself, or fate, fate destroys. destroys it. Yeah, fate destroys it. Yeah, that, that was fate destroying it to stop them from activating it early. Yeah, it was a very mysterious dungeon as well. I particularly enjoyed the face on the ceiling that talks to you at one point. Yeah, right. <laughs> the bat, the boss fat music for the uh, the. The, for fate and for the dragon god are both really interesting um because for the most part we've been hearing the same battle music for most of the game so i find it really interesting that uh these guys get unique battle songs i, I will say cross dimensionally like i thought it was interesting that the very end of this dungeon is literally just a non-organic version of the uh the sky dragon island Yeah, kind of. Once and once you clear out the Terra, Terra Tower, that whole section, it's uh, th this is the this is the part of of Chrono Cross is really interesting, but also very sudden. Um, you go back to the beach, and you talk to the 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 children again, to Chrono Luca and Marl, and they just kind of drop the rest of the story on you. Like, oh, by the way, it was Shala the whole time, and she's fusing with Lavos, and you need to go. <laughs> Oh, bring the Chrono Cross. You need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, honestly, I like that plot development. I think it's really cool. And I like um, the implications it has for the the story, how it ties into Chrono Trigger on DS. Um, but like we've been alluding to earlier, you have to play the elements in a certain order and then use the Chrono Cross. And who figured that out on their first try? Thanks. Not That's I. I but... Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> What would we now, did think? anyone else? Oh, what's that? What do we think about the game's ending? Um, that is a good question. There are so many characters, and I believe each one of them has their own little text blurb uh, about what that journey has meant to them. And that's another reason where, like, uh, I can't imagine beating the game that many times to see all of those text blurbs. But I thought that was interesting that whoever you bring does have some impact. Yeah, that is interesting. 
Yeah, because I I didn't really really realize this because like with uh, Leah from that uh, Gaius Naval, it I I don't know if it's official or not, but I thought I heard that isn't it theorized that she's Isla's uh, mother from the prehistoric age in Chrono Trigger or. I've never heard that one, but, I mean, you know, at this point, it wouldn't surprise me. At the very least, it could be an allusion to Iowa. Yeah. Just stumbled across that theory, and I was like, huh. Huh. I always felt that Gaia's navel was a little bit out of place in this game for that reason. It just seemed so specific, like, that it seemed like a small version of her. Like, it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, kind of like a forced reference, almost. Yeah, I mean, it does. It, it to me feels like a little bit like they started running out of time a bit, like, um, and they had to wrap up the rest of the story. Like, there could have been maybe another disc or something. I don't even know. Potentially a guile situation where it was an aborted storyline. Yeah, because we know they wanted to then to make more connections back to the, like they originally. I think they even said there are forty five playable characters in Chrono Cross, but they were originally going to be sixty four. And before that, <laughs> oh my gosh, dang, that, oh my god! And before that, the the design scope for the game was that every character was going to be playable, like every single character. Oh my gosh, that's insane! Because they really wanted to under to stress how the dimensions uh, and the fl- affected people differently. Um, Jeez, Kato, so there was, it. There was oh a lot god. of ambition put into Chrono Cross, as we can tell, and. Uh, they applaud it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so had to get oh, my gosh. But I think a lot of that still shines through in the final product. Um, the ending, too, ends on a really... I see. To me, like I know we've talked about people um, wanting Chrono 3, like a Chrono break. Honestly, I think Chrono Cross works really well. I think they work good as a duology because I like how Chrono Cross ends on kind of a hopeful note that Shala's going to go look for Janus now. Um, I can kind of agree with that. And her on the beach at the end, kind of mirroring kids' introduction. Like I just, I, I dig it a lot. I think it's, I think it's a good, kind of mysterious note to end on. And I feel like any answers to those questions we get wouldn't be satisfying at this point. So I'm almost happier to just leave it alone and just theorize about it than I would be like getting modern day Square Enix to come in and be like. Yeah, Serge is Janice, and now he has a leather jacket and rides a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> and he's played yeah, by I mean, Gact. It would run the risk of being too fan servicey and just tarnishing what the other two meant, I think. I agree. Yeah, the closest we'll get is another Eden. Yeah. Probably. Because that itself is... That also has oh, Kato, go on. That also has Kato working on it, right? Yes, he wrote the script for that. It's it's kind of mostly a love letter to the Chrono games. Yeah, because there's like, like tons of small references here and there. You but... mean like the night that's a frog? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and there's a uh, like a, a straw man that looks like Mojo in a few places. And, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Mojo, my boy, uh, makes it through. I like it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do we have any uh, closing thoughts on Chrono Cross before we wrap this one up, guys? I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. It's most- such a dense game. Yeah, it is a singularly ambitious game, and I think it's gotten better with time. Like, yeah, <laughs> time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is this one of those games that uh, I think really it's really special? And, like, it's not, you know, it might not be the instant classic that Trigger was, but it is a worthy sequel in its own right, and easily one of Square's best PS1 games. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's such a heavy game that I I don't know how, as a kid, I I was able to even understand it. I mean, I don't understand it now. (laughs) (laughs) It's true, me too. Me too. (laughs) I'll always give you credit for going for a more philosophical bent, and man, did they really pull out the stops with this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know what? Uh, if they were never to make another Chrono game, I- I'd be fine with that because I- these two just did a great job on what they are. Um, yeah. And I appreciate that it's not a Chrono 2 and that it, it is its own game. 
because it, it's a solid game. I mean, if they were ever to make a third one, I I so hope that it like it's just like them trying to like fix everything. <laughs> it's just Kano is the main character trying to figure oh, out man. how to fix this mess. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be in, on board unless they got Kado back because I feel like they really need him to like guide it. I feel like there couldn't be a third one specifically because time and space are really like the two primary uh, I, I guess forces there. Like what would the other one be? I mean... Yeah. Unless they went back and used both of those in one game, and boy, what a mess that would be. Yeah, from a, from a time travel and mobile. <laughs> from a gameplay standpoint, it's kind of hard to imagine. I mean, I guess it could be like, like what uh, what thirteen two did, where you had like the uh, the kind of grid you would go through with different timelines and parallel dimensions, or rating Historia. Uh. You know what kind of a game it would be? It would probably be like Majora's Mask. A three-day limit, trying to fix everything or do something, oh, and then like, everyone just dies. <laughs> you've triggered the you've triggered the Lavos apocalypse. Now play through the game a few times until uh, until you figure it out. <laughs> or even better, you play from uh, 65 uh, million BC to 2300 in real time. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> it just keeps going until like well, we, the Earth has been wiped out in uh, reality. Well, I mean, you might not have to wait too long for that. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and with that, uh, that charming note, uh, listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Retro Encounter. Um, if you like what you heard, you know, always subscribe. Send us notes at retro at rpgfan.com. We love to hear from you. Rate us on iTunes. Um, this has been a episode 189. Um, next time, um, for the month of May, we're actually planning something really special. Well, plan it for the month of May. It currently is the month of May. Um, we're going to be doing Until Dawn for a future episode. Um, so look, uh, keep an eye out for that. That's, uh, that's exciting, especially now that Rami Malek has his Oscar for a bad movie. Um, but whatever. Um, that's a- uh, uh, where can we find you, Marcos? Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at RhythmRoo, uh, and you can just email me at uh, uh, music at rpgfan.com if you want to talk about music. Uh, Kyle, how about yourself? Well, uh, it has been fun talking with all of you, and if anyone wants to get a hold of me, uh, Kyle S at RPG Fan uh, is going to be the best way to do that. I'm definitely open if anyone has suggestions for uh, features. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hit up, hit hit up the features writer. Tell him about how much you want a deep dive into uh, the philosophy of Chrono. Um, hint, hint, Kyle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Tyler, where can you find me? <laughs> um, you can best find me on Twitter uh, at uh, at Cosmos Chaos, and it's Cosmos with a K. That's probably best place to find me. All right. As for me, um, I'm Peter at RPGFan.com. If you want to email me, you can also reach out to me Twitter at I Have Fury. Um, and this will about do it, do it for our two-part discussion of Chrono Cross. And listeners, good night, good luck, and remember that fate has no forgiveness for those that dare to stand against it. Long live the riptides! Long live the riptides! Long live the riptides!